Kespa limited them to two uniforms. That is a tragedy. <laughs> oh well, here we go. Picks and bans for game number one. Spenu, Sonic Boom versus the Koo Tigers. Here we go, and there's that victor ban. Of course, Kuro, you know, kind of the original Every victor game. here in Korea. Yeah. Every game, Kuro, oh, yeah. they ban his victor out, and we haven't seen it in such a long time, but there's an Alistair not going to let Spenu have that one up first. Yep. And so I'm really wondering, are we going to see that Varus ban against Kuro again, too? Now I, like, really want to see his Varus. I think you have to ban it because they're on because Ku's on red side and they'll mm. just last pick it if you don't have a solution for it. So that's true. Annie actually take it away from Gorilla. Oh. I mean, well, he had a really good game with it against Janair in game three, I guess. But it's it's not like a huge consistent pick for him. No, it definitely isn't. That is a little bit confusing. Yeah. Well, the rise ban not too uh, surprising. Just a generally strong pick right now, and you know soul has been struggling on on pretty much everything he's uh, tried to play lately so why not just limit him to those champions that he hasn't done well on which, which is, is which is all of them yeah. almost everything so it's Callista true. will not be played by Spenu in spite of the fact that they did actually manage to pull out a win against IM with that champion and their sole yeah. win of the season they don't want to first pick it huh so what are they going to first pick here Grog is still available one would assume that that would be first pick worthy Two Tigers could really open up this draft, and they're going to ban Vayne. Oh, okay. Interesting. Huh. Vayne is a champion that Nuclear has only played once. But Not a big worry, and uh, easy first pick Gragas. If they think that Spenu is going to first pick Gragas, uh, they could deny yeah. the gragas Vayne synergy that is so strong. And That's a good point. We'll see if there's another reason for denying the Vayne pickup right here. Well, I would love to see Kuro play Echo, and we may just see him pick it straight off. I don't know. Do you, do you think it's worth picking right away? Smeb might play Echo. I mean, honestly, oh, yeah, that would be a, good a very point. good champion for Smeb, taking yeah. that Sivir. And they're just going to go with the Nautilus and support early on, not revealing anything at all. I do like the idea of Smeb playing Echo, though. It, it does really fit his play style well. Absolutely. Yep. Riven player would be strong on that champion. Yep. Yeah, it fits it better than Kuro's play style, honestly. Yes, yes it does. Belkaz <laughs> Garen, let's make it happen, Spinu. Come on. Or not. Oh well. Well, the Rumble Force Soul would not be uh, a surprise at all. It's been pretty much what he's played in nearly all of the games. Yeah. Almost certainly just going to go for that champion right there. And then how are they going to round it out? from that point forward. I mean, occasionally we see Nuclear on a champion like Jinx. They did very well in the early game against yeah. CJ with that champion. And the Thresh seems pretty reasonable. Just a good solid pickup in general. Ooh, maybe the Tristana for Nuclear, actually. Huh. So, so picking that now, not giving away any more than they need to. Yeah, you're definitely going to take the AD in support in that round of the draft, and yeah. they're going to grab the Tristana. So we've seen that be very successful in terms of fast pushing compositions, uh, not only in Korea, China as well. Uh, LGD actually doing a really good job with Imp on the fast push Tristana. Very interesting game to see. Well, we could certainly see that as Zir for Kuro. Maybe the Yasuo, I guess. But last time uh, Kuro played Yasuo, things did not go well for uh, the Tigers. So I like to switch over to the Evelyn for Hojin. That has been Hojin's go-to champion as well this season. Well, Wisdom has preferred the Gragas. Hojin definitely really liking the E pickup more yeah. often than not. And they're hovering over the Echo right here. They could blind pick it, but... Well, Sasson's played a lot of different champions this season, so... Picking Echo, it's very strong right now, wouldn't be too surprising. Yeah, pretty safe champion as well in the laning phase, so yeah, not too much of a risk to blind pick it, but the response could be quite interesting. Blind picking huh. that would be suicide against Kuro's vein. Or not vein, Varus. If it, you cannot pick Gaston in this situation against a known Varus player like that. What about Azir? I feel like Azir yeah, would suffer some safe. of the same uh, things. Oh, no. With that poke, though. No, well, but you're not, you don't have to melee minion waves, so you're not going <laughs> to get hit by Yeah, it. I suppose. The Hail of Arrows, the passive, oh, not as much of oh, a, a problem. Oh, oh. Yeah. oh, well, they go with the Azir. The Varus picked up for Kuro anyway. Yeah, it's still fine here to play the, the Varus, but it just doesn't have that same level of risk. Uh, Azir definitely much better. And, I mean,
Benu has the tool to deal with this. Catch and Soul finally switch over. Maokai to Gragas was curious what's going on. A little bit of delay on the switch right there. So they have really good siege with this con with this composition. Spenu with the Azir Tristana. If they're left alone in lane with turrets for any amount of time, those turrets will die instantly. And they can also just Gragas all people off them and burn them down. So we could see some creative sieging here from Spenu Sonic Boom if they can get it together. Good team fighting comp, good all around comp. And Ku, man, they are powered up for the mid game. This is, they're really gonna be hitting that power spike hard with the rumble. Varus and the Sivir, but they will be at a disadvantage late. Seems like that's what you want to do against a team like Spenusonic Boom, though, is just get in there, hit them early, and then just close it out easily. Well, they that's certainly the have everything they need to accomplish those goals in this game. Yep. We'll Good see if dive they can, potential as well. Yeah, we'll see if they can pull it off. Spenusonic Boom looking for not just a match win, but just a win in general. Their second game win would be nice at this point. Ku Tigers, though, looking for an easy way to hop up the rankings a bit. We'll see if they can do it. Time to get in the game and find out. And here we go. Welcome to Summoner's Rift once again. Spenu Sonic Boom versus the Ku Tigers. Ah, yes, and Heartseeker Varus for Kuro. Showing his love for Spenu Sonic Boom. He's going to send them lots of gifts. Unfortunately, these gifts are uh, elongated and sharp. <laughs> and uh, generally, not something you want coming at you really fast. Uh, this is pretty much classic Ku Tigers right here. Just go no. for that big mid game power spike, try and close out the game, play well around when you're strong, understand your team compositions well, so uh, that oh is Oh boy, that's okay. a Hail of Arrows, that's a slow, Secret flays people away, Flash is used. Gorilla actually flashed in for the stun there. Well, and they got the Flash, so support Flash for support Flash, I guess. Yeah, just trading the Flashes, it happened early enough that it's not really going to be that big of a hit on the laning phase. Yeah. Especially since Gorilla did start with his E anyway, so... That's not too big of a deal. Yep. They just caught them out right there at that brush. You have to be careful. That is, that tri brush on the bottom side, on blue side, is one of the scariest parts of the game at level one. Because you never know when they're just waiting around the corner right there, because the red side can get to that point on the map before you can really do much of anything. And also, there's a huge danger of like a thresh hook coming in through that brush. That is one of the least pleasant places to stand as a pro player. It is true. I think the ultimate least pleasant place to stand, though, is in your opponent's fountain. You don't last very long there. <laughs> it's dangerous stuff. Yeah, you can get eliminated pretty quickly. Yeah. Well, we have the 2v2, so standard lanes in game number one here. Smeb still jungle following a little bit, though. Hmm. Looks like they are going to be sharing XP on these first couple of camps, and then Smeb will just teleport into lane, Maokai. Wow, Kuro already doing a lot of damage to Sasin. I mean, the nice thing, at least with the Azir, is you have some range, which gives you more time to dodge. But yeah, this is, uh, I mean, the Varus is strong in the early and mid game. There's no doubt about that. Uh, they do have the tools to get onto him, however. Of course, with Gragas, you can really disrupt him with that ultimate. They have the Maokai also, so they can definitely deal with Kuro. Yep. Yeah, Hojin just waltzing by on his way to the bottom jungle. That said, Kuro has been pretty spectacular on this Varus in his first couple of games. Yep, well, there's a reason why he was banned against him every game against Jin Air. Yeah, against KT, he did. Just a tremendous amount of work on that champion. Yep. And Hojin just grabbing his blue buff. And we'll see what the path is going to be. Ignoring the Scuttle Crab coming all the way down, they, he may have a chance here. It's an early gank. Yeah, there's no vision from, from Spenu. This could be rough. They're starting well, to kind of wonder. I mean, they see Gorilla standing in the ward. I mean, They want to get Secret because he doesn't have a flash. That's the idea. But Secret is appropriately playing back, and it looks like, looks like Hojin just giving up on that one for now. I feel like he maybe could have tried something. No, you don't show for that. There's no way that gank is going to be successful. Hmm. 
Uh, so don't show on the map. Don't let them know where you are. Keep Catch guessing, because right now Catch would be playing more aggressively if he had any idea where Hojin was. And so Hojin gonna check the Raptors right now. He'll know that Gragas is probably somewhere on the top side of the map. Yep, taking the Krugs. Catch is grabbing those Krugs. Do you think there's any chance of a dive here against Smeb? Well, you're not going to dive. They were trying to wait to see if he would push out, but Smeb playing very conservatively right now. Catch. Ooh, this is such an interesting huh. little battle between junglers right now. Yeah, they're managing to avoid each other pretty effectively so far. Catch actually stealing a lot of his opponent's jungle right now. Hojin hasn't farmed a camp in a, quite a long time at the moment. Yeah. Yeah, still level three. Yeah, so he actually goes up to the Krugs, finds out that no one's up there. Now he's going to get scared, and he's going to have to cover Rumble because Rumble's pushing forward. Yep. That Gragas could be there. Oh, that's that's not good. He does need to wait. That's a little bit sloppy, I think, because if you see that those Krugs are stolen, now he didn't see Gragas in the tri brush right there, so he probably did assume that he went back down. But there's a possibility that Gragas is, like, down doing his own gromp after that and that this rumble pushing forward could put him in real danger. That's true. At least they do have the pink ward in the river just to keep him safe. So Smeb, you know, would be aware of if Gragas like bounced into river or something like that over the wall. No. Secret trying to zone a little bit. CS though, pretty even across lanes. And it looks like we're, uh, you know, unless the junglers find some opportunities, we're going to have a, a pretty passive early game. These junglers are really looking for ganks, though, is the thing. Mm. Oh, you going to pop in there. Prey just going to go ahead and... Oh, nice stretch line onto Secret. Secret does have his flash back up. He's going to use it right away, and that means he does make it out. Yeah, really close gank for that flash timing right there, and they do manage to... Actually, he, he was running uh, the mastery for the cooldown reduction on the summoner spells, otherwise he wouldn't have had it back up right there. Yep. Well, now, now who knows? Hojin getting spotted by Catch here. Catch actually going to go into the body slam, stun the dredge line, hits a raptor, brings in Gorilla. Sawson throws the sand soldier over the wall, but doesn't do a whole lot with it. Very safe attempt on the jungle invade, though, because they, they did get... Spenu a little bit scared after that gank, and then they just wanted to take away as much as they could. They had a ward in the tri brush to see if Secret or Nuclear was going to come back up into that brush, but Gorilla just moving very well with Hojin on the map. They didn't get anything from it, but that is a very safe way and a very reliable way to try and make plays to deny your opponent. Yeah, you don't really lose anything by going for it. Prey able to farm just fine by himself here in bot lane. So nothing ventured, nothing gained, nothing lost either, I suppose. In this case, Smeb, though, gaining a little bit of a CS lead up in top lane. Yeah, as he usually does. He's just such a reliable player, and it, it appears as though he's going to be going Abyssal Scepter first this game, so feeling very comfortable in this matchup, not yeah. going to be getting any early magic penetration, instead just building up to the big buy right there, and then trying to get an advantage off of that. I think it's a really good pickup with the Gragas, Azir, and Maokai on the other team. He's going to be very effective. Oh, lost his pink ward, though. Doesn't have another one to place down, just his trinket ward available. So he's got to be a little bit careful here now. Now, Hojin a bit behind in the jungle after everything that's going on. Catch just up a few creep camps, and that's going to be problematic. Hojin really far behind. It's going to be a while until he can hit level six. Right. Yeah, we see him farming now, but none of those early ganks worked out. Well, it was also just his pathing kind of took him in the wake of Catch. And so he wasted a lot of time going to camps that Catch had just taken kind of just one step behind the entire way. Yeah. Well, Prey finally starting to get a little bit of a CS lead here in bottom as well, too. So the top and bottom lanes gradually sort of getting a tiny bit of an edge. And we have a lot of people from the Ku Tigers coming to the jungle. Wow, that's a deep pink ward for Hojin. Just great vision control this game from, no kidding. from the Tigers. You can see how well coordinated they are around these war these wards and the pressure in their lanes. Kuro just there going with Hojin to make that play so that you don't have any risk of Hojin accidentally dying. 
Hojin still struggling to catch up, of course. Catch already level six. Catch on the top side, though. They nope. want to get Secret without that flash. Yep, there's the ultimate. He pops the box right away. Hojin comes in. There's no flash for Secret. Should be able to be taken out fairly easily. They even bring the teleport down. And they can just transition that right into a dragon, too. Curl right there as well. What beautiful timing. Yeah. So they played around the blue buff timer of Spenu Sonic Boom hmm. to make sure that the jungler wasn't going to be down there and that they would just have that man advantage guaranteed. Set it up really well in terms of communication with the teleport. Absolutely great gank, playing around a buff timer, a summoner timer simultaneously, and then transitioning that into a dragon. Tight, tight play by the Tigers. Yeah, that's going to earn them a little bit of a lead with that first dragon. CS-wise, things are uh, caught up, of course, because people had to leave lane to go take it. But, like you said, a lot of progress being made by Q. That mid lane turret, though, taking some damage. Yeah, Kuro off getting the blue buff instead of Putting the pressure down in the mid lane, but eventually he'll get back before it falls below 50% HP. Still a, sm a small price to pay for the edge that they got. Yeah, it could certainly be worse. Now, they have to be careful, though. Soul is the one with the TP advantage right now, but because that play was made so cleanly, even if he does TP to the bottom side, best you can get is a couple of kills. You're never going to get a dragon off of that until it respawns right now. So they're also just probably going to play safely around this, this teleport up until the next dragon is up or until Smeb has his TP back up in turn. And that the Ku Tiger's really, really sticking to a very smart script so far this game. Yeah. Well, Curl picking up the Brutalizer after his tier two just for some extra early punch to those piercing arrows. It'll certainly work. And this is what's different about the Tigers now, is that now they're actually more willing to pull the trigger and make plays in the laning phase right there. They, they don't just wait for their opponents to slip up. They become more active about abusing timer cooldowns and everything like that. So their shot calling remains really quite good, yeah. except it's actually just been moved up even earlier in the game. Well, like you said, they really needed to do that. That was a part of the game that had the most issues for the Ku Tigers. They needed to address that early game weakness, and they certainly has. And uh, I think you know, now that we're almost done with the first round here in the tournament, the Ku Tigers are really starting to position themselves as being a, a big threat in the second round. Well, right, and not only that, but a big threat for Worlds as well. Remember that, yeah, true. you know, they ended last season with a hell of a lot of circuit points in second place, and if they can win this season, or if SK Telecom wins this season, they'll probably have the most circuit points as long as they make a decent run at the playoffs. Yeah, should be. Oh, Secret coming in, flash play. They catch Gorilla, there's the box as well. Nuclear coming in, going to bring in the jungler as well. Oh, the second hook misses. Or the first hook, rather, for that fight, so no kills. For Spenu, just a lot of damage coming in. But that's such a great disengage play right there, and they were equal in summoners at that time, and the fact is is that Soul didn't TP bottom for that, and Smeb has control over the top side right now. He was the one pushing in. So pretty easy time for Hojin just to go in and get a little bit of counter jungling done while he can. Yeah, he knows Catch that. May try and come back around. He has that explosive cast. Uh, try number two here might be pretty good. Uh, he's coming in. Can he knock them off of the turret, though? Gorilla and Prey all running underneath. Here comes Catch. Teleport coming down as well, too. Oh, he completely misses the explosive cast, though. Death sentence misses. This has gotten very awkward very fast. They have to save Soul, catching a lot of trouble. They're just going to let him go because that gank did not work. They're just going to take the mid lane turret instead. Sasen was oh, roaming man. right there too when they didn't have lane pressure. Oh my, what a terrible dive attempt from Spenu. Ugh, that is, that that is, is ugly. so ugly. I mean, losing oh, at least a tower for that with no benefit whatsoever and you burned your TP. Are they going to lose tier one and top also? Holy cow. I feel ill after seeing that. Looks like they're not going to get the tier one in the top side. Well, Cat's just completely missing his ultimate in a way that we seldom see at the pro level. I mean, he knew Gorilla's flash was down. I don't even understand why he threw it there. Yeah, that's a very good question. Well, that is a big bonus for the Tigers, especially when this next dragon's going to be coming up and the mid lane turret is already down in their favor. Yeah. And that dragon's going to be up in about a minute 40 now. 
You know, it's almost like a Coyote versus Roadrunner in this bot lane, man. I mean, Spenu is like the Coyote trying to set up all these like elaborate <laughs> schemes <laughs> to get him, and in the end, he just ends up like falling off a cliff. And Grillo goes, meep, meep. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Prey just goes, meep, meep, and pops his ultimate. <laughs> <laughs> yep, pretty much. Oh, man, alive. That was one of the worst dive attempts we've seen this season. <laughs> yeah. That was in in terms of in terms of bad plays, that was probably I'm trying to think of a worse play I've seen a team make this season. I don't know what was worse. CJ's composition in game two or that dive. That dive was worse. I, I don't know about that. Oh come on. Oh. Because the idea behind the dive wasn't terrible, whereas It was the execution, yeah. Well, see, that now we've got a challenge, right? Because the idea behind CJ's comp was bad, but the execution was okay. And so we've got the idea behind the gank being bad, but the execution being terrible. So, I don't know. Maybe it's a bit of a wash after all. <laughs> I guess it is. Uh. All right. Well, Hoaching coming around. Big wraparound right here. 30 seconds before this dragon spawns. They can make another play right now. They have TP advantage. Spev's just sitting there waiting to kill them. They're going to dive this. Uh, yep, no flash still on Here secret. Here comes Oh, this will be fun. <laughs> Should be. Catch is going to be there, but it's going to be too late. Oh, big ult hits both of them. And nuclear backs off, but an easy kill onto secret. They're going to take the bot lane turret, then they're just going to go take dragon, and then they didn't even have to TP to go for it. Nope. I mean, Spev was set up right there just in case he was needed, but Beyond that, again, just playing around Secret's Flash. Oh, boy. This is getting a bit painful. To be fair, the Tigers, to be fair to Spenny, the Tigers are playing this game super well. Yeah. It is incredibly crisp League of Legends that we're seeing here. This is how you play a very low-risk style and successively accumulate advantages based on what you know. Oh, and oh then nice get, steal. And you get Dragon stolen. Catch. Mike get caught himself though on the way out. That's a kill for Kuro. But by stealing that dragon, that actually helps out quite a bit. It does, because yeah. Ku is very focused on the mid game with this composition. They're the ones who should be winning those fights. Yeah. Instead, they let Catch sneak in there and it's a bit sloppy, maybe. pick up the dragon. Kuro burns his ult onto Sasen. Sasen has to cleanse out of it, right? Yeah, I mean, that was a pretty good trade. That's a fairly short cooldown ultimate for Varus and a fairly long cooldown summoner spell for Sassen. Okay, this Tristan is still an issue, though, as is everyone backed out of that bottom lane. You can't leave Trist in a lane. And look at the build that Nuclear has. Fast Berserker's Greaves here, so he's doing even more damage to the turrets. And they really want to get these turrets down so they can make some sort of run in terms of getting even and gold in this game, but they're not going to take down the outer in the bottom side quite yet. Yep. Not yet. Wow, that turret in top lane really low. Smeb could actually have, like, Rumble get out of his suit and just kick it, and that turret would fall over. Well, and Soul has to go back. Yep. No mana. He went for a Spirit Visage first because he's been so afraid of this laning phase. And only now does he have the sustain from the Catalyst. It was just Doran's Ring Spirit Visage, which in my mind is a pretty big overcommitment to the Spirit Visage early on. And now his turret's down as well. It's going to hurt. It's going to hurt against that double AD for sure. I like the caster minion watching while Smeb was taking out his turret. He was kind of like, hey, hey, stop. <laughs> I'm going to attack you. <laughs> Slowly just following him as he walks past. You would think a cannon would hurt more to be shot with, really. I don't know. No, it wasn't a cannon. It was a, it was a caster oh, minion. Oh, a caster, caster minion. minion, yeah. They're pretty bad sorcerers then. I guess so. They just kind of shoot little little magical, magical shots. I don't know. It just looks so lackadaisical, you know? The apathy. The apathy of the <laughs> caster minion shocked me. Well, that's why they're put in as fodder for everyone on Summoner's Rift. I guess so. They, they just were, don't care. They were too lazy to be Summoners. They're like, yeah, I'm just going to go back to Fountain listeners of Nirvana, man. They're truly the Gen X of League of Legends. That's right, <laughs> yep. <laughs> Pop in some Pearl Jam and just, just chill. No, I'm just describing my life now, actually. That's, that's, that's <laughs> happening. Oh, Prey goes on a nuclear catch. Is right there, though. Doesn't have the uh, ability to catch Prey, though. Prey getting a little bit low. The rest of the Ku Tigers 
are there. Knockup on the soul as he comes in. Nice play, actually. Flash away for Prey. Prey's still alive, and Hojin picks up a kill. Make that another one now for Smap. Goodbye, Soul. Kuro taken out there. Catch extremely low. Kuro flashes ahead for another auto. That'll finish him off and get him the double. Going for the triple now. Nope. Prey manages to take the last kill for the ace. And so what do the Koo Tigers want out of this ace? I, that, I mean, the Koo Tigers right there just forced to fight in their power spike. Yep. They did everything right to get that play set up. Spenu just took it hook, line, and sinker. And because they were so far forward on the map, so the Tigers knew that there was no tower for them to be protected by right here, and they wanted this turret. So they engage this little team fight. Catch doesn't hit the body slam. And then from this point forward, it's just everybody piling in to the bottom side of the map. I mean, Seeker gets a decent playoff right there, but look at that equalizer giving Prey so much protection. Kuro just gonna stand on it and rain arrows and auto attacks down from the back right there. Very poor Azir ultimate. And that's just a flash forward for Kuro as they start to mop up this team fight. But it couldn't have been more perfect for Koo. The, yeah. Again, they bait Spenu out into that long lane without protection. They start a little skirmish that, that Spenu thinks they may be able to turn around, but they can't do it yet when this Koo Tigers team is at its most powerful point. What surprised me a little bit, too, is that that body slam from Catch didn't turn into a flash body slam. He had the summoner available. He definitely should have flashed. Later in the fight. Yeah, if he would have hit Prey with that flash body slam, that probably would have been a kill for them. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And now this is just going to turn into a giant steamroll from Koo. They're going to invade every side of the jungle. They're going to try and get these, just punish Spenu as much oh. as possible. There's an equalizer down. There is wow. Catch on top of an equalizer. Catch got caught. This is your jungler. This is your jungler on an equalizer. Whoa, okay. that's a lot of damage on this, Austin. That's a blue buff taken. Unfortunately, Rumble got it. It's not yep. very <laughs> useful. They could just go for Baron right now, honestly. I uh, probably will they do it so early. Baron's not even been up for a minute yet. They have 280 carries. Oh. They could definitely do it. It's not the sneakiest uh, trap ever set. <laughs> Didn't somebody pin check the brush? Nope. Oh they will my. not. Wow. Oh, wait. Oh, hey. Hey, there's a pink ward in there. Oh. What do you know? <laughs> so that's why they didn't come over. Oh. <laughs> surprise, surprise. Yep. Shocking, really. Well, it gives him a chance now to push up the lanes. Eight kills to zero. Kuro is so huge. Yes, I mean, is. look at him. He already has the Whisper and the Brutalizer here to max out. Once he gets that Muramana, he's going to just be insanely strong. Yeah. Oh, Sasin could be in a little bit of trouble here. Oh, Judge Lion barely misses. Yeah, a lot of good uh, CC layering opportunities or uh, chaining opportunities, rather, for the Koo Tigers as well. They can do whatever they want. They pretty much can at this point. Kuro sharing his love with the Scuttle Crab. Koo Tigers really respecting Spendu this game, though. They played. They certainly, even on paper, could have played a very sloppy game and probably just still could have 1v1 every position, outplayed their opponents and won the game. But they didn't take any big risks at all. They yeah. they just played so well. I mean, they lost that one dragon. They they got a little well, bit sloppy there, but that's... I mean, sometimes the dragon steals are just going to happen in a, in a smite war like that. Gragas is pretty good at that kind of thing, too. Oh, speaking of which, they're going to try it again. Here he comes. Didn't get it that time. Gets out on the lantern, though. He tried. He certainly did. Well, the siege should be set up right now from the Tigers. They have wards, deep wards already in the jungle. They can certainly bait the Baron. They can. They have a composition that's going to be pretty good at sieging. They may be worried about the wave clear from Spenu, though. So if you have that Sivir and you can continue to force team fights away from turrets, that's probably going to be the better idea because you're not quite strong enough yet to reliably dive. Yeah, you don't quite have that fantastic Sivir Siege, do you? Well, it's it's also just a matter of the Azir and the Maokai being able to CC and the Gragas being able to CC you under the turret and maybe turn it around. So I think this is the smartest plan for Ku right now is not to set up for the Siege, but just to force the Baron. All right, well, they can always turn off this if they need to. Baron has started. There is a ward there for Spenu. They know what's going on. Here comes Catch. They're going to dredge line right on a Catch trying to get away. Nope. Catch got caught. Right back onto the Baron, you know? Yep, why not? It's like, sorry, Baron. Uh, just give us a second. We'll be right back. All right, we're back. Equalizer. 
Ooh, grab onto Kuro, but Secret spending a lot of time on the Equalizer. Teleport coming in as well. Baron taken. That was a little bit close, but the Goo Tigers got it. Kuro having to flash over the wall. Almost gets taken out, but he lives. Gorilla is okay. Whoa! From downtown. Nice oh, he got hooked, though. Oh, it was a nice try. Kuro gets the kill on Sauce and loses the Baron buff, though. Yeah, so still, still worth it if you're the Koo Tigers. You trade two for two, you get the Baron buff in the end. You still have your wave clear available, so you're not going to be punished too hard for this prey. Going to be able to clear that up. They're going to go for it, actually. TP, TP, TP. Yep, that's right. And oh. goodbye, Secret. Uh-oh, Nuclear gets ulted. Big Evelyn ult comes in for Hojin. Can help him take that one out easily. Hojin managing to escape. Soul just trying to do whatever he can, but against the top laner and the AD carry, that is not going to work out. And Prey picks up another double kill. Wow, so Prey just starting to go off this game right now. Yep, he's got 2,600 gold to spend, too. And big shopping trip for Prey. What will he get? Doesn't uh, Last Whisper just picks it up. Oh, doesn't really need that. Probably should have gotten Bloodthirster, actually, but oh, that's fine. Failure. <laughs> well, there's a lot of wards there, aren't there? Huh. <laughs> just on ward. ward clearing duty, gold for free. Doing some ward farming. Yep, Saucen's like, all right, let's put a ward there, I guess. So they got to clean up these side waves right now. Koo Tiger is all over that. Evelyn and Rumble will be sent to those positions as the, the rest of the team maintains the mid wave and picks up the red buff. And from there, they'll start a push in. We'll see where they actually want to go. Spending at least having a decent amount of pink wards deep in their own jungle to prevent Coup from freely rotating through that top side. Yeah, true enough. Well, now for the top lane. They've got those Baron powered minions. Smeb pushing that up pretty easily. Looks like they could sort of come around from the side too. Going for that mid lane tier too. Prey able to spell shield that hook and take up the turret. And yeah, pretty much. Uh, Pretty much methodical play here from the Koo Tigers. There's not a lot that Spenu can do anymore at this point. They're already 10k gold down at 25 minutes. That is about that is about what happens. This is about as textbook a game of League of Legends as you can get from the Koo Tigers. I mean, much. in terms of their play, taking advantage of your opponent's weaknesses early, turning a bottom lane support flash into a giant snowball, fighting during your power spike. Koo Tigers just putting on a clinic right here and. Spenu not having any real way of responding to it. Oh, except for you catching Kuro. I write that up. Whoa, what an equalizer comes down for Smeb. Kuro giving his life for an easy team fight win for the Koo Tigers. Soul getting a little bit low. Double kill for Hojin throughout all that as well, too. Yeah. Was it worth it, Spenu? Was it worth it? Well, they keep trying to walk through this choke with all the Sand Soldiers. Finally, Prey able to get through that position, but if Spenu can hold on to this turret, it actually might be worth it for them because they'll be able to actually wait out the rest of the Baron buff. That yeah, was such a beautifully terrifying equalizer by Smeb, though. Wow. I mean, they certainly were punished for it. But not as hard as they could have been. Banner of Command now for Hojin. Yeah, uh, Hojin and Prey actually with the same scoreline so far, 5-0-9. Isn't that nice? <laughs> it is. They're KDA buddies. <laughs> in the good way, too, not in the way where their KDAs are terrible. That's true. They've got a, a cool 14 KDA between them. Not right. bad. So now Koo just going to try and set up again. This time Ward's already in place around that dragon. They've got the lane push. They just want... They're third of the night right now. And the problem is, is Koo really can't close this game quickly. There's really good wave clear on the side of Spenu. They can't dive them because of the amount of crowd control that Sonic Boom is running, even with this 11k gold lead. So it's going to be a bit of a grind from here on out. But there's really not any way Koo can reliably close the game. I mean, the big thing is that they got that lead that they needed to get in the mid game. You know, I mean, they did what they needed to do to set themselves up for a late game like this. Absolutely. They did a very good job of that indeed. It's just that closing this game is not so easy when these two team comps are interacting. And Koo doesn't want to 
make that big mistake of diving. Kuro getting oh, caught out. That's right, yet again. Wow, they're going to get Kuro for like the third time now. Whoops. Well, they've been good at catching Kuro at least. Yeah, very, and Secret has been landing those hooks very yeah. reliably. Oh, but the trap comes in. Hojin lands a big ultimate on the catch. Catch getting very low. Soul able to zone a little bit. Nuclear is ulted. He has to get out of the fight. They're going to take down Soul. Another kill for Prey. Oh, Flash Dredge Line oh. didn't connect anyone, but that is a beautiful equalizer yet again coming in for Speb. Whoa, that blade nearly took out Secret, but looks like Girl's going to get in there for a little bloodthirsty support action. Speb and is so good at holding his equalizers yeah. and waiting for that perfect timing, and Koo just crushing that team fight. 5v4. Or 4v5, rather. That works. I mean, uh, they already, on the top lane turret goes down. Yeah, they already set up that that cannon with the banner of command on the top side. So someone has to go deal with that. Unfortunately, death timer is still so low that Ku are probably not going to be able to get an inhibitor here. So what do you think about Kuro getting caught so much here? I mean, is that just sloppy play by him or just yeah, good picks by Spenu? A little bit of both. I do like how Secret is committing to these really hard with flash hooks. He's done it a couple times now. And that shows, I think, good initiative and his skill shot accuracy is there. So you don't always expect them to flash for that and then for them to hit it. I suppose. But Kuro should not be the run one running point on some of these jungle excursions. He should be the one. I mean, they haven't they have an Evelyn for God's sake. Like, just <laughs> let her be invisible. Yeah, yeah, it is a bit funny to see the Ferris taking the lead there. A little bit odd. Oh, Dragon getting taken out. Can they steal it? Nope, not that time. Another close attempt from Catch, but the Ku Tigers secure their third dragon. Well. Hojin's two levels up, so his smite is going to be more powerful anyway. It's going to be hard, even harder in that instance for Catch to take it, even if he does try and use his explosive cast for the burst. Baron going to be up in five seconds as well. Ku should have no problem taking number two. Yep. 20 to four kills. That's pretty good. Pretty good for the Ku Tigers. Prey having a, a massive game. 6-0 and 12 on the Sivir right now. He is certainly doing quite well. With everything that Spenu has tried, it's actually a little bit surprising that he hasn't died yet this game. Very good at escaping. He has been. Well, Ku lining up for this Baron at the moment. Uh, I mean, they know you're there. There's it's like the wolf spirit flying around between everyone. They can see exactly what you're doing. Soul gonna TP in and awkwardly find himself behind Smeb. Yeah, Prey's gonna ult. They're gonna go in onto Soul here, see if they can catch him. Looks like they will, an easy kill for the Ku Tigers there. I don't know why you would TP in like that. Uh, just to be intimidating. <laughs> Didn't work. And so, another easy Baron for the Ku Tigers. They should be able to get this one. Doesn't even look like Spenu wants to try to stop this. Catch just hanging out in a ward. So now a Baron buff that uh, Ku Tigers are not going to lose on a couple people. Yeah, immediately hitting the lanes once again as well. Looks like they don't want to go into the bottom side yet. Hmm. Very interesting choice considering there is that naked inhibitor in that part of the map. Instead, they're just going to go onto an inhibitor turret that they have the wave to ride forward. Smeb has TP, go back and clear out that wave in the bottom anytime he wants. Yeah, it looks like they just want to clear out the top turret instead. Wave clear is still pretty good with that as year though. Where, I wonder where the bannered minion is right now. Oh, huh, it's a good question. I think it's probably dead. It should be there will be another one pretty soon, however. Well I suppose nuclear can handle that fairly well. Here we go. We're coming in now, but again the wave clear just very good. It, it, it is gonna take a while. Yeah. It, it. Spenu has such a good composition for turtling. Yeah. I'm sure that's part of the plan, too. You know, I mean, if you end up getting a bit behind, you can just try to wait it out. But I don't think that's going to work this game. Now, eventually, they're going to go down, obviously, with this big of a deficit. It would be absolutely sensational if Spenu were to come back. They're actually going to make a... They're going to banner a melee minion right here. Nice. Oh, Sivirald activated. They're going to go in on a sauce and immediately take him out. An ult on a nuclear, actually. That's the longest way a Nautilus ult has ever gone, I think. And they're finally wow. breaking the base. All right. 
Well, they already broken it, actually. They're just doing it the hard way without taking that inhibitor. Now they're going to try and just end the game. That is a big melee minion. First Nexus turret goes down. Soul trying to stop. There's an equalizer just to keep everybody else from coming in. Soul on his own. Smeb getting very low. Has to zone use before he dies to the turret. But nice ult from Varus on a nuclear easy kill there. There is the ace cleanly and a very clean win for the Koo Tigers as well in game one. To be expected, but there it is nonetheless. GG. Wow, big game from Prey too on that Sivir. And one of the things double, double. that Prey has struggled with this season has been his positioning on Sivir. On some of these lower range AD carries, he looked a little lost. This is obviously not the biggest opponent for him, but he did very well in terms of his positioning that game against a team with a lot of dangerous crowd control. So that is an encouraging sight for the Koo Tigers fans, I'm sure. Uh, certainly. I think you can't uh, take anything away from that game except for being encouraged by the Koo Tigers. Really playing it well, you know, showing a certain amount of respect to Spenu, but that results in a very good looking win for them here in game number one. And, you know, you have to expect that we're probably going to see about the same thing next game, too. I mean, it just does between the Koo Tigers and Spenu's Sonic Boom. That's right. Sonic Boom. Sonic Boom indeed. So there's the Rek'Sai. Ban going down right off the bat for the Koo Tigers. That has been Ketch's go-to jungler. The exception of last game, he played it five games in a row. How do you approach banning out a, a team like Sonic Boom when really there's no scary picks to worry about? What do you do? just do? Just ban it randomly, I guess? I don't know. I mean, Gragas. there's always something. If they yeah. don't want to first pick Gragas, they can take that away. Uh, limit the jungler's ability to really do anything at all right here if Hojin wants to go for a more farm-oriented jungler. And just have some fun and ban out uh, Sejuani here as the last one, then just first pick Evelyn and then just be like, ha ha, <laughs> what are you gonna play, catch? <laughs> Force him onto the Nidalee or something like that, yeah. Yeah, a Lee Sin. <laughs> then we find out he's like a godly Lee Sin, we're like, oh no, what, what have the Koo Tigers done? There's a Victor ban to go along with the Rise ban. We're never going to get to see Kuro's Victor again. This is so sad. I, and now I just wonder it's too good. why it's too good. every single team bans this Victor against Kuro. Well, we know. We know how good he is. What's the final ban? Koo Tiger's sinking really hard. They're going to just ban the Sivir. All right. Why not? I think that's a good ban. This may mean that they first pick a jungler or they first pick Rumble. I suppose this makes it tough too for uh, Spenu to make sort of an all-in comp, which is what a lot of teams I think would kind of do in their position, you know? Well, we'll see if they ban the Annie this game or the Callista. Looks like it will be the Callista. Okay. And so that puts Ku in a situation where they could first pick the Alistar. And remember, Gorilla is professionally undefeated on Alistar. In his career, Never lost a game on that champion. Whoa, so. Nautilus Echo locked in. All right then. Early, early Echo lock in. Yep. So how do you counter an Echo? What do you think is a good? Uh, I mean, honestly, I, I I don't really know yet. He's such a yeah. versatile champion that it's hard to say. It's it's funny that uh, this early mid lane pick actually isn't that bad because people haven't really worked out as we much. We have no what idea the are. if this is a mid lane pick. That's true too. That's a good point. Well, I think the Riven for uh, Smeb would be pretty safe as well. I'm gonna switch it over to Corky Evelyn. So Gorilla is six and zero all time on Alistair right now, and wow, that's it's his ability to get into lane and then dive you. His coordination around his junglers has been so good this season when he plays the Alistair. He will just show up in random lanes at random times, dive you, and then back out. And really, he's been so effective at putting pressure on the map, snowballing all of his lanes. And that's kind of the reason. And then we see Prey back just with the quirky pickup as a comfort pick. Come on, go Velkaz. Why not, man? Why not go Velkaz? They've been hovering over it a lot. Spinner does this. I don't they think they're going to play the Velkaz. No, oh, I'm sorry. That's OK. It's probably good anyway. I just have to watch it lose. Well, it's because it's not a very good champion. I know. <laughs> I know, but it's it's so fun to play, though. All right, Maokai and Jinx. So Jinx is a bit of a, a surprise. She doesn't have that early game punch like she used to, and yet she is still as vulnerable as ever. So 
All right, Nuclear. I don't know why you would pick the Jinx over the Tristana. Now, they've yeah. saved their... The, the Echo could be flexed between positions right now, so they really haven't shown anything in particular. Well, uh -oh. you see, there's a time be... for the Riven finisher. You bet it is. Fatality. It really is the Ku Tiger's fatality move when they pick Riven to end you and then get a pentakill on the Riven. Pretty much. Coma's like, uh, or not Coma, no phase like, okay, it's time for mid Hecarim Crow. You can do it. Oh, TF though. Reliable a lot, pick. A lot of poke, a lot of pick. Coming out of the Ku Tigers. Yeah, they're not going to blind. I mean, they know the Maokai is going top, so they could have taken the Riven, I suppose. But this is definitely much safer. And they picked uh, TF and Hecarim because they saw the Jinx. Hmm. This is the perfect team composition to deal with Jinx with. Uh, as soon as Kuro gets the Zonia's Hourglass, there's literally nothing Nuclear can do to stay alive unless he has a QSS or a Mikhail's on his team. That is... Very true. And you're not going to be building a Mikhail's early on a Nautilus. You need that Righteous Glory. Hmm. So they may take the Fizz in the mid lane as a counter pick to the Twisted Fate and then run the Echo in the jungle. Okay. Smart draft. Yeah, it could be. Sawson has played Fizz earlier this season. The, the Tigers should have known that this is a possibility. I think this is a great pick. Fizz is very good in lane against Twisted Fate. Because basically, as soon as he tries to pick a card, as soon as he throws it, you just dodge it with Playful Trickster, and then you're on top of him, and you kill him. Yeah. So. Uh, or it might be a Jungle Maokai. No. Or it might be a Jungle Echo. Or it might be a mid lane Fizz. There we go. There you go. Yep. Oh, All right, we got it. <laughs> it is what it is. So Jungle Echo. All right. Is Echo going to be 0-2 in champion so far? Well... By virtue of Spenu's Sonic Boom playing him, you have to think probably. Probably, yeah. And it all depends on how hard Spenu can focus this Twisted Fate and shut him down. Because in the late game, this Hecarim TF combo is going to obliterate Jinx. It's one of the best combos of champions to play against Jinx. There's just no escape. You're just yeah. basically bowled over in the back line. You start and, and then you're bowled over. Yeah, very little counterplay. Yep. Well, that is that. So Spenic or a Spenusonic Boom searching for their second game win of the season. It's going to be tough though. Ku Tigers looking for a quick 2-0 to end night. And we will see if they can pull it off here as we move into the game. I'll put my money on the Ku Tigers. Spoiler smart, alert. Smart place to put your money. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> you know me. Well, here we go. Time for game number two. Let's get in the game and see who takes it. All right, here we go. Welcome to Summoner's Rift. Spenusonic Boom versus the Ku Tigers. You know, I do have to say, though, that the Spenusonic Boom fans are more vocal than the Jyn Air fans were. <laughs> they're actually they're better. They're better. Well, looks like some more tri brush cheese from Ku. Oh, yep, flash gold card on the soul. There's a knockup, there's the danger, and Soul goes down, doesn't even use his flash. First blood goes to Hojin. Well, all right. So, there we go. And and uh, we're a minute into the game now. They did it two games in a row. They did the same tri brush cheese two games in a row. And while Spedu wasn't really dearly punished for it in the first time, they were this time around. Now, that said, Gorilla's Flash was used. Both of Kuro's summoners were used, and he didn't get the kill either. So that's that hurts a little bit. Yeah. Um, and Gorilla had to take Pulverize first. I wonder how much counter jungle pressure uh, Hojin can put on to catch now, actually, with that longsword. Can he just go in and 1v1 catch? Yes. Almost certainly. I mean, I, don't, I haven't seen Jungle Echo enough to know 100%, but... You'd think that would be a pretty easy duel for Ho Jin to win. So we'll keep an eye on him, see what he does after he picks up the red buff. Mm -hmm. And they're going to know that he's starting on the bottom side of the map. Yep, meanwhile, Catch going to go ahead and grab the Gromp. 
And Hojin is... Was he seen by that ward? A little bit hard to tell. Looks like he wasn't. I don't know. Oh, Prey already zoning. Yeah, Prey and Gorilla playing this very aggressively in spite of just having a Corky early on and Gorilla having to start with his Q. Kuro. Oh, blue card used. There we go. A move on to Kuro here. He has no way to really escape from this. Flash. Kill comes in anyway. Ah, oh, but revenge for Hojin. Hojin very smart to start pathing up there, but yeah. a good kill right there from Soul coming in off of the level two. He went to the Raptors, took those out, and then came in for a gank. That was a smart game plan to try and snowball this Fizz. Fizz gets the kill, has to use both of his summoners for it, but unfortunately can't get more of an advantage than that. But good, good early game setup for Spenna for sure. Well, you know, it was a good idea to take advantage of the lack of summoners for yep. Kuro as well, too. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well done. Now Hojin is going to absolutely steal the red buff right here. He could just fight and catch, too. I don't know why he's running away from this. <laughs> yeah, you think I they mean, have I, that lane pressure as well. but Yeah, I don't know this matchup very well. Maybe it looks like he's going to take advantage of the lack of summoners for Sasin. Gold card. Oh, Kuro throws a blue card in, actually. Oh, man. Sasin just ate the, the bait, bait so hard. <laughs> he's like, LOL, blue card. Oh, no, I'm dead. Why would you go in? They know. knew that that red buff would, ju I mean, catch just saw Hojin on the top side. I don't know. Playful trickstery in on that. I mean, that was like the easiest bait in the universe for Kuro, who just pulled a blue card and just let it rip right there and then baited <laughs> Sasa in. I mean, I don't know what to say. Yeah. That was pretty bad. Yeah. Well, that's three kills onto Hojin already, and if, if catch isn't terrified yet, he should be. The, the crazy thing is there's a ton of kill pressure on the bottom side of the map right now. Once Gorilla gets that flash back up, he's going to be able to just flash pull nuclear and shove him straight into that fed Evelyn. Yeah. Holy cow. Hojin just skipping the Trailblazer completely, going straight to Brutalizer <laughs> in four minutes. Oh, this is not good for Spenu. This Eve is so strong. Yeah, we'll see what he can do with it. He's coming bot now. Looks like he's going to try for some sort of lane gank. Uh, nope, just gonna go get Krugs. We'll see if he rotates back down again. He's gonna want to wait for the flash mm. from Gorilla just to make sure that they can actually finish one of these kills. Oh boy. It's already level four. Yep. But just gonna go after the scuttle crab right now. Oh. Is he going to pursue this Fizz one more time? Jungle Echo. Catch is there. Oh. Hojin, though, can probably still solo catch. They see catch. Catch does uh -oh. now sees Hojin. Yeah, that's a lot of damage already onto this. Oh, man. Look, that's like two hits, man. It's like an Jeez. auto and a hate spike. And now yeah. catch can kiss his jungle goodbye. Yeah, pretty much. Yep, there go the wolves. Catch is like, oh, man. I wish I had time to take those. Uh, <laughs> Kuro, no mana, still playing aggressively right here because they just don't have any control over the mid lane. If Sasin goes in, he's going to be punished. So Kuro, surprisingly, taking an advantage of this match. Oh, man. Oh, boy. Sasin, you're in big trouble, buddy. Catch coming in as well. There's a gold card. Oh. Playful trickster into the wall. Oh, no, nothing playful about that. And Catch decides that he wants to die as well. Exhaust on to him. Vivid's like, where'd my team go? They're dead, man. They're all dead. And we talked about Gorilla's roams, but he's just <laughs> so good at coordinating with his lanes to get yeah. these kills. And Ku just running rampant over Spenu. I really like what we saw from Spenu using that level two Maokai once they got the twist in advance to pick up that kill for Fizz, but it has just been going downhill since then. It's a pretty, pretty brutal slaughter so far. It looks like Hojin wants some action up in the top lane now. No flash for Sol. He's in big trouble. There's a fear coming in from Smeb's ultimate. Soul pops his. He's tanky, no doubt about it. Gets pushed back, though. Is he going to live? Looks like barely makes it out there. Well, it was a nice try. He's going to force a recall. That's going to be some serious damage onto the top turret, unless Catch can save it there. That looks like Soul just stick around. All right, well, that one didn't work, but it doesn't really matter. They didn't really burn a lot for it. Oh, never mind. Gold card, Kuro comes in, dodges. Oh, there's the Echo. <laughs> wow. He dodges a W for Echo. It's like, yeah, I got this. 
Really nice, though, by yeah. Kuro to follow that up during the recall. No kidding. Great use of that first ultimate. He has a 100% kill contribution thanks to all of the action focused around the mid lane this game. And then him picking up that kill in the top side. Gorilla becoming this major roaming force on the map at the moment. Yep, going to try to maintain that undefeated record on Alistar. I don't think it's going to be too hard, judging by what we've seen in the first seven minutes and 30 seconds of the game. It's been a very exciting seven minutes, to be fair. It has. I like it. It's kind of a little bit of a lull now, so <laughs> that means we've got time for a joke. What? Uh, What's Echo's favorite part of every meal? Say what? What? <laughs> Seconds. Oh, God. Oh, that's terrible. <laughs> yep. There you I go. didn't even want to know the answer to that question. <laughs> you forced me to ask. I know. And thank you. Thank you for being a good co-caster and humoring me. I appreciate it. The world thanks you. Uh, Headbutt Pulverize on to catch Saucens there to provide moral support, but he will instead Die, it looks like. Yep, there's a gold card. Gorilla pushed back a little bit. Nuclear coming in. He could get excited. Wow, this is getting a little bit messy here. Smeb gets taken out. And Spenu is going to get a kill or two here. Goodbye, Hojin. That's a double kill for Nuclear now. Prey on the run. Vivid could catch him. He does. Gets him with that flash. There's the ultimate. I thought the ultimate would act was activated. I guess not. He's not level 6, so that's impossible. Wow, well, probably don't want to feed the uh, Jinx right now if you are not. the Koo Tigers very over eager to uh, set that one up and fighting deep in Spenu's jungle is going to cost them a dragon. Oh, actually they nearly stole that. They did. Ah, but there we uh, go. Kuro decides that he has not died yet this game enough. So, there we go. Well done. Oh, Koo Tigers decided to uh, make things interesting again. It was it was a little too close in gold earlier or the, the gold lead was getting too much, so we didn't close the gap. Yeah. I mean, and now our uh, faces can get well acquainted with our palms this game. That's nice. <laughs> <laughs> wow, Ku really going deep on that one. Yep. And man, that that reset, I mean, they have two Sheens on the enemy team, but to commit to a fight like that when Spenu just has every option to reinforce is very dangerous. And especially Smeb, all he has are Merc Treads and a Home Guard enchantment. And remember uh, that most of the kills on this team are on the Evelyn. Yeah. <clears throat> well, Soul just going in on the Smeb yet again, and he's got a little bit of an edge in that lane now. It's also worth noting that all of Ku's champions. Oh, up. gold card. Here we go. There it is, used on nuclear. Can they do enough damage? Big knock up on Nakuro. Oops, Ku Tigers going a little bit too far. This is getting a bit silly here. Goodbye, Gorilla. Wow. All right. Two Tigers, apparently apparently someone has turned off their brains. <laughs> and uh, this game is well, suddenly uh, closer. Spenu. Quite a bit closer. I mean, Ketch read that very well. He knew that Kuro was going to try and TP on that bottom side to get control over this Jinx. And now they get a tower over it. And all of a sudden, they jump out to a 1K gold lead thanks to the greed of the Koo Tigers just making very transparent plays. And diving too far. And all of the Koo Tigers champions are very item dependent. TF, what's his goal? Zonia's Hourglass here so he can get to the back line to shut down Jinx. Smeb trying to get into a Cinder Hulk situation where he can actually start to get tanky. And Prey needs that Trinity Force to really be strong here. So they are fighting at the wrong times. Uh, Hojin coming up, but he meets the Pink Ward in the river, so he's not going to be able to make any plays up in top lane anytime soon. And yeah, Koo Tigers need to tighten things up a lot. Otherwise, this game is going to get much closer than they wanted to. Already is much closer than they wanted to. They found Should themselves be. at a gold deficit. Yeah, with the start they had, too. It's kind of embarrassing that things have gotten to the they point had, they have gotten. They, had, they were 6-1 and one at 7 minutes into this game. Yep. And they had kills in every lane. So not really an excuse for their very poor play after that. Spenu at least fighting back, doing a good job of trying to equalize. Yeah, I mean, Ku kind of handing them those kills on a silver platter every time, but I don't think they're going to get much more. They shouldn't, anyway. Well, I don't know. You really wanted to keep this Fizz down, and he's getting a little bit big right now. Isn't really behind in terms of his farm. Yeah. It's certainly looking a little bit rough. But, you know, that said, the Ku Tigers are still even, right? They're well, a tiny bit behind, so. That said, 
we've seen a game where Spenu got a 5-0 jinx That's against true. CJ and still lost. That's true. So they haven't been very good about playing around their strengths in general. That's a good point. Catch able to get a little bit of a start going on this Echo now. 1-1-3 one, one, and three for him. And we'll see what sort of plays he can make. Morel Namakon just picked up for Saucen too. So he's actually got his first big item this game. Kuro still looking for his after picking up that Sheen. Uh, he's going to go for a Lich Bane. He should go Lich Bane into uh, Zonia's Hourglass this game. That would be pretty ideal in terms of what he's dealing with on the enemy composition mm -hmm. and enable him to start split pushing pretty early on here. Uh, there is that Fizz who will be able to match him in terms of that split push, but strong 1-3-1 this game from Ku overall. Oh, gold card uh, perhaps coming in from the Gate of Destiny, but it doesn't look like they're going to pull the trigger on that one. Just trying to push people back. We've got a short time until Dragon's up. And catch throwing in his W. Can he get in for the stun? He can on Nahojin. Knocked out by Gorilla, but immediately Vivid comes in as well. There's the ult on Nahojin as well. Sasan manages to nail Prey with his ultimate. They're going to go in. Ult used by Evelyn, trying to get away here, but that's a kill for Soul. And now one goes down. Prey able to pick it up with Corky. Smab trying to back away. Catch with another kill there. Gets him with the Time Winder. And Whoops. now they're just going to take the red buff as well. Good engage from Spenu. Yeah. Coming in on that one, recognizing that Smeb still not having a lot of items. Smeb is really squishy still. And so can't survive a lot of the burst that's coming in from the back line of Spenu. Kind of had to ult out of that just to pick up Sasin. And Spenu 2k ahead now. And you know, normally we would say, oh, Catch trying to come in for a dive. Not going to really fight it. Normally we'd say, you know, well, they can just wait and, and come back late game, right? They can just wait for the enemy team to make a mistake. But do they really have the composition that can do something like that? Yeah, sure. I mean, you can always catch people out with a, yes. a twisted fate. And yes. eventually I think Spenu will make a mistake where Ku is going to be able to create a pick. But mm. that's really in Spenu's hands. Well, Smeb is... Managed to at least stay even in farm. And Kuro does have quite a bit more in the mid lane. One less death as well. Got that Lich Bane now. Dragon coming up soon, though. So if Spenu can prevent the Ku Tigers from taking a dragon here, that would be pretty big. Yeah, absolutely. The Corky has the Trinity Force right now. You'd think that the Ku Tigers would be able to push them off this objective with their very subpar poke compared to TF Corky. The thing they've got going is some pretty decent engage with the Maokai, but Maokai starting to group. Ooh, that he's playing dangerously right now. They could pick him off real easily. And yeah, we'll see if they decide to. Uh, no, not going for it. I suppose if they commit to a kill here, they would be giving up the dragon. Looks like they are anyway. Looks like they just want to give it up and make a play on the top side right now. See how many towers they can take to get back within gold range. Right. Oh, Soul on the run there. They're going to catch him anyway. Trying to twist advance in. There's a gold card on him. Gets a Sun Arcane Smash. Knocks people away a little bit. But Soul will go down. A kill for Kuro. Now, can they get a turd or two out of this? Well, they put Corky in that mid lane. But there's a big minion wave in bottom. And Jinx is going to be left alone with the turret early on that's probably not going to end well for the coup tigers i think their tier two is probably going to die yeah whoa grab on to prey here but nobody else is around vivid wow there goes the tier two and now the tier one in a little bit of trouble too and just not enough damage on that top side turret so they trade a dragon and a tier two for wow that is a very bad trade for the tigers they yeah. didn't want to commit to that and now they take a bunch of damage onto their mid also. Kind of a very bizarre game now at this point. Well, they still have TF Ultimate if they want to make a play, and they have a lot of vision up around top. Well, they're kind of getting to the point now where they have to start making plays. Yeah, they, they're not too far behind. So, and I mean, this Hackerim is... This composition is such a nightmare for Jinx in the late game that Ku still has a pretty good compositional advantage because how Jinx survives will be kind of a miracle. 
All right, well, mid lane turret under some pressure. Kuro just trying to clear the wave as best he can. Evelyn coming around from the side. Looks like Ku Tigers might try to flank this. Yes, they yeah, will. Here engage. we go in. Three man ult. You Sasa not caught by that though. Gorilla comes in for a big pulverize, knocks people up. Kuro and Prey trying to follow up with some damage themselves. Here comes Smeb from the side, still a little bit low on items, and they're gonna have to let Spenu go. Well, wow. they didn't want to use the TF ult right there. It was too close to that tier one turret. So in the end, Spenu manages to group, manages to take a tower and get out. And we've seen this Spenu before. We've seen this Spenu have leads against CJ, have leads against SKT. The problem is they inevitably make a massive error and the game ends instantly and they lose. Yep. So can they hold it together this time that they've actually managed to procure that lead after the Koo Tigers really didn't snowball properly and overextended on a massive advantage that they had early. Yeah, it might be kind of tough to hold on to that. They've certainly struggled with it so far this season. I mean, the Jinx still doesn't have an Infinity Edge yet, though. There's been a lot of action for only 18 minutes into this game. Oh, she just got one now. Finally picked it up. It seems like this is the point in the game, though, where the Ku Tigers composition is going to finally come yeah. alive, you know? Well, it would be really nice if they could get Azonias onto the TF. We'll see what item he goes for next. True. Just looking more at Prey with the uh, Trinity Force. Sork shoes done now. Well, Hecarim, too, just not really coming into his own yet. And yeah, I suppose. He's going to need a lot more items. He's going to need that Cinder Hulk. He's going to need some armor and some magic resist to really start being useful in these fights. And Cinder Hulk Hecarim really does shine when he gets to three plus items. But before that, he doesn't do a whole lot. Yep, so Spenu has to kind of keep the pressure on. Looking Smep for waiting. the port. Yeah, waiting to see if he can TP here. They have a good angle. If they see Maokai on the top side, they may go for it, but they're not going to do that just yet. Q Tigers don't see the fight that they want, and are so just going to back off. It seems like they do need to be really careful about where they fight for the foreseeable future until they can maybe get another pick or two. At least they've got that good wave clear in mid. Uh, Spenu just abandoned the bottom turret right here to Prey, who has that Trinity Force. So Jinx is going to make it back around in time, but they uh, they had the wave right up there near the tower, and everybody started piling into the mid lane. Kind of awkward defense right there from Spenu. A little bit. It's ending up being much more of a tense game than I expected it would be. <laughs> I think a lot of people than I think uh, the Ku Tigers expected it would be. <laughs> yeah, I think we're all pretty much in that boat right now. The big gold differential right now is nuclear over prey. Yeah. At this point in time, all those extra assists really racking up for him, as well as having that global gold from the turrets also. And it's going to be tough for prey to fight this one. Does go back and get his vamp scepter. They still have that huge, huge poking advantage, and no Aegis yet on the side of Spenu. That, that's a bit interesting, the Echo going for the Glacial Shroud instead of the Aegis first. Hmm. Just because you have all this magic poke damage coming in from Kuro and Prey and no real defense for that yet. Dragon up in about 30, and you feel like Ku really needs to go for this one now. They're already down 0-2 in Dragons. And letting Spenu kind of get a big Dragon Edge with a 3-0 would be playing things a little bit too close to comfort as far as that five dragon comes in later in the game. Well, they're in a really good position to poke right now. Yep. Kuro doesn't have a blue buff, which is, that hurts a little bit. He'd rather have a blue buff going into this fight, but at least he has blue cards to get some of his mana back, and they're playing very far up into the lane. They've got no wards on the dragon right now. scared to go into that side of the river and this may be Spenu just gonna go ahead and take a dragon two man right now. Uh, yeah, I think looks like the Ku Tigers are just gonna give up a third one in a row here. Surprised that you make that decision when you wow. have the destiny. 
That is, it seems very risky too because they're not going to get any turrets out of this. They're not going to get any kills, it looks like. Just kind of willingly falling farther behind. Uh, Kuro got a blue buff by himself, and now is the time to make the play if they're going to make one. They didn't have eyes on that, and they didn't want to pop the TF ult to see if they were doing it or to try and prevent them from taking that third dragon. So it looks like Ku just finally trying to play conservatively around their power spikes. Unfortunately, they gave up a lot for it earlier on. I mean, giving up the dragons is not really a problem if you're the Tigers right now because you know so clearly when you're going to be strong against Bennu. The problem was engaging in those fights before you were strong enough to really deal with the champions they were throwing at you. Yeah. And now it's a 3-0 to zero dragon lead. It's a 3-1 to one turret lead. So, Koo Tiger's going to get a little bit of practice of uh, playing from behind today, I guess. Well, Kuro is extremely close to finishing out that Zonia's Hourglass, and that is a huge buy, yep. because that means that he's finally going to have that pressure on the back line that he's been lacking to a certain degree. Catch going to come in right here. Help to clear out the wave with that Time Winder. But once, once Kuro gets that item, they can win team fights again, even though they're behind in gold slightly. They're going to be probably at their peak point of power. Yeah, we'll see if they can capitalize on it. In the meantime, Spenu just pushing their way across the map. Do you, th do you feel like Spenu could have more wards deeper into the uh, Ku side of the jungle? Yeah, they could have pressed in a little bit more aggressively, especially since you know Echo is quite a slippery champion as it is. Some wards going down right there in the tri brush. They want the angle onto this turret. This is a great time for the Tigers to fight. We do see Smeb going back right now as that pink board is cleared out. He's got other choices, however. Looks like they're going to try and set up that flank. Here we yep. go. Oh, Catch gets pushed back. There's a Gate of Destiny coming in. We'll see if they go who they go after. Maybe it's Catch. No, Gold Card up in the top lane onto Soul. Kuro goes out there, gets ulted immediately by Nautilus. There's a kill onto Jinx. They managed to get in on the nuclear and get that one. Catch taken out as well. And here is that moment we were talking about. Ku Tigers able to finally use that power spike. Baron activated. Smeb just wants to get the damage in onto Sassen. And now we'll see what the Ku Tigers can do with this. Well, they have to push and get a turret off this. Uh, Kuro didn't even have to use his Zonias in that fight at all. I mean, Smeb found a great angle on the nuclear and just shoved him right into the welcoming arms of the rest of his teammates. Now they're all going to collect in the mid lane, take out a mid turret. That'll be a gold lead for the Ku Tigers. And uh, now the big thing we're going to wait for is for Jinx to go ahead and get a QSS because, uh, or Vivid to get that Crucible. It's going to be a little bit of a battle. I mean, they need that item to deal with the gold card Twisted Fate now. So it's, it's this game is a little bit of a seesaw in terms of itemization. It certainly seems that way. Two items for uh, Smeb's Hecarim as well, too. That Frozen Heart's going to help out a ton. He's going to have a he's going to have another item when he goes back now. Should be close, yeah. He's getting a lot of gold from these jungle camps with his Skirmisher Saber. Uh, he should be moving into a Cowl probably next, and Prey grabbing a red buff as well. So that was a great fight for the Tigers. Absolutely, the one they should have taken. Question is, how are they going to do on this next? engage when it comes to the dragon probably similarly well yeah they could well trying to catch hojin they do catch him with the fizz ultimate as well too gets caught out catch hit with the gold card can they finish him off he's going to go ahead and gain some health back from his ultimate prey's going to flash ahead did he get him with the rocket no not quite kuro comes in with the gate of destiny onto sauce and that's going to be a kill for prey now so catch getting away they're going to trade mid laner for jungle and ku tiger's just going to back off yeah, I don't really want to lose a whole lot more or, or have the potential of losing more right before the dragon. Definitely a good trade for Ku right there. Go yeah. ahead and take out Sasin one more time. Slow him down as much as you can because he is that threat to your backline, to your AD carry, and he's gotten a little bit more kills than you'd probably like, even though he's also died several times, and he's working towards that Zonia's Hourglass now. Smab coming in from the side. He ulted over the uh, Flame Choppers to get on the nuclear. Looks like they're going to push him back here for now. The rest of the Ku Tigers not there to really help out. Not really in a follow-up to justify that play. Not really. Uh, now the question is, uh, it looks like they may have Onslaught of Shadows up just in time for this next dragon in one minute. 
Roku starting to clear out their lanes, but they've got to set up better for this one. Letting them have number four would be a pretty big disaster for the Tigers. Coming into this fight, however, they do have an Aegis now. Blade of the Ruined King completed. So they have a pretty nice item advantage. Smeb actually going for more damage now instead of the, instead of the Cowl. So not respecting the fact that Sasan might be able to kill him here and instead choosing to go for the Phage into the Trinity Force. Oh, I think, like we mentioned earlier, just really wanting to get in onto nuclear and eliminate that Jinx as fast as he can. Well, this is a build to do that with. Yep. Definitely is. Dragging up in about 15 seconds now. Oh, <laughs> missed the time winder. This happens. Oh, boy. Smev getting a red buff could be really huge right here. That'd be a great takeaway. One less tool for the Jinx to kite with. And indeed, they're going to get it. Smeb, too, he's going to be even stickier. He's got Phage and Red Buff right now. That Jinx has almost no hope of escaping, especially with that Flash still down. Yep. The Tigers. Oh, they're going to throw in the Time Winder. There's the ultimate use by Evelyn. Nice ult by Smeb to come in as well, too. Prey still OK. Got knocked up, but not taking a lot of damage. Gets the kill onto Vivid. Sasan not able to follow up that Fizz ultimate. Oh, nearly does, but the double kill comes in for Prey, actually. Curl looking for a gold card, finds one on a catch. And there he goes, going to be easy couple of uh, couple objectives now for the Koo Tigers. Prey chuckling on your screen at that team fight. Did die in the end, but not so. before he helped his team pick up three more kills and a tier two turret. Starting to come away with that gold lead. They're going to be able to get that dragon as well. Yeah, that's Not really be... anyone's going to be there in time to go ahead and take that objective. It's going to be a really nice boost as well, too, for uh, the Koo Tigers to get that little 6% AP, 6% ability power as well, or AD AP, rather. And they'll get it, no problem. So, yeah, just finally waiting for that power spike and taking advantage of it. Let's watch that fight again. Nice response by a Hojin to drop the Evelyn ult just to kind of set things up. For yeah, Smeb. but look at that huge Hecromult that comes into play yeah. right in the front line right there. They don't even have to get the flank. No teleport available during this fight. Bray moves forward. Sausage actually just going to E through a minion and then go down. But unfortunately, the damage over time is going to end Prey in the end. Catch finds himself all alone after being flash gold carded right there by Kuro. Pretty much. And now in the spot lane, Smeb ready to go toe to toe with Soul. Almost. So after a bit of a, a worrying time, despite their big, big early lead where Ku really overplayed, now they are comfortably, they hit their power spike, they did their Ku Tigers things. Yep. And now they are once again in a very comfortable position. Yeah, at this point, it's a matter of uh, pushing those lanes, huh? Yep. Uh, and the 1-3-1 one, one split push here is something that Spenu just doesn't have an answer to, really. As soon as Smeb completes that Trinity Force, uh, the Fizz, the Maokai are not really going to be able to stand up to the amount of damage that those champions have. And they will start to become pretty big issues. Smeb is looping around right now. Going back into lane, still a bit chunked out. Gonna have to go back to base sooner rather than later just to top up on HP. And he can set up a teleport pretty much at any time he wants right now. Yeah, and I wonder what he can buy when he goes back as well too. He's gotta have at least another part or two of that Trinity Force ready to pick up. And look at that, the Luden's Echo for Kuro also, just mm. if he gets into the back line and hits multiple people, so I'm gonna look for an engage oh. right here. He finished his Trinity Force as expected. Yep. All right, just walking back to lane for now, just wants to push back Bot a little bit on his way. So if you're the Koo Tigers, you just sort of one, three. orient yourself near, uh, oh, one, three, one, huh? Yeah, not, just, not really worrying about the Baron. Yeah, I would just one, three, one right now. You, that's their strongest strategy. I mean, they have a Corky in the mid lane and an Alistair for disengage, TF, and Hecarim to split push if they want to. Can absolutely deal with that. Although it is harder now that Sasin has the Zonia's Hourglass because that's another way he can become invulnerable. But with adequate warding, you can just 
keep on pushing the fish, the fizz in, and not be too terribly concerned. Fizz fish, similar, similar thing. Similar. Yep. Here we go. Oh, gold card. There we go. On to Soul, and they're gonna just run over him with Smeb as well. There's the flash from Maokai, and he's actually gonna get back under turret. Kuro loading up another gold card. There's the stun, and there is going to be the kill on to Soul. Smeb taking a lot of damage from the turret, but they get the job done. Meanwhile, a little bit of aggression from Spenu in the mid lane. Doesn't result in a whole lot, but a turret taken down and bot by the Koo Tigers. Yep, so good dive right there. They're able to follow up on the engage very well. You can see the damage coming in from the Hecarim at this late stage of the game. And even though Spenu try and take that fight, try and take the 4v3, Gorilla's playing that Alistair, so he just is able to easily ult and disengage from that situation. Spenu going for this tier two in mid here, but the Koo Tigers might have a decent flank. A lot of damage on the catch already. Nice headbutt, pulverized flame choppers, dodged by Gorilla as well too. The W from uh, Echo does stun a few people. Oh, but it the gold matter. card! Wow. <laughs> he caught him. That's a double kill for Kuro. And Koo Tigers just kind of running over Spenu now. Vivid tries to flash to get away, gets pushed back towards the wall. Smeb just becoming an unstoppable killing machine at this point. Another knockup onto Soul as he twists, advances back to try to escape, doesn't work. Smeb over the wall on the nuclear, gets taken out though, and Jinx is just excited to escape with her life at this point. <laughs> Jinx actually gets a double kill <laughs> in that so. instance before they can uh. actually push down. Instead, looks like Koo doesn't want the inhibitor turret for some reason. They're going to change their attention to the tier two. And that gold card right there, so Koro flash gold carded, and then Sasin flash just a split second later, and that carried that gold card like double distance for the very long range engage. That was pretty funny to see. So Catch finds Prey in the jungle right there, takes a bunch of damage up front. Smeb knocking Sasin into the wall and then back towards the rest of his team. And Prey actually gonna get hit. Look at that. Ooh, long range gold guard. Hey, it works. And then just the follow up from there, pretty straightforward. If it gets punched into the wall, but there's the Evelyn ult to get the mass slow down. Gorilla with the combo. And they try and chase Soul just a little bit too far right here. Smeb tries to shove Nuclear back Oops. in. It's just not quite enough damage. A gorilla dies to a turret. Wah, wah. Not the cleanest game we've ever seen from the Koo Tigers, but they've managed to gain back quite a big lead here in the later stages of the game. 20 seconds until that next dragon. Looks like they may just fight around Baron instead. Well, at least Crucible is done for Duclear right now, so he actually has the ability to maybe live through this dive if he can also avoid the Hecarim damage, which seems unlikely. And yeah, we'll see. Dragon is up. And it looks like the Q Tigers are just gonna walk down and take that now. Yeah, just clear up that objective. That's one of the very few ways that Spenu could feasibly come back into this game without another Dang. massive throw. Smeb is just going to TP in from behind. Oh boy, goodbye Jinx. Yeah, gets the uh, home guard as oh well. My. Look out, nuclear, oh no! Wow, that was fast. I mean, well, Kuro manages to get that kill. Nice damage coming in from Prey as well too. All of Spenu grouping up, all of Spenu getting totally rocked. This is going to be a very clean team fight win for the Koo Tigers, it looks like. Soul knocks back Smeb for the moment. Got to dodge that Time Winder, which Smeb does not do, but I suppose they can just turn right on to Baron, huh? Yeah, just move on to that objective next. And man, the setup was just so good yeah. for the Koo Tigers in that last fight. And then Spenu did the big mistake. They clumped, got like four man pulverized into four man Hecarim ulted, and absolutely got demolished. Well, Nuclear just vanished, too, at the oh, beginning of that fight. Oh, he got one shot. Fight. He yeah. got one shot by, by uh, Kuro and, and Smeb. They did their job. I yep. mean, that is why when we saw the Jinx come in in the draft, the last two picks were TF Hecker instantly because that is such a wonderful counter to this Jinx in terms of team fighting. Yeah, I'm sure we'll see the replay here. Koo Tigers with the Baron buff now. They can push ahead and, for the first time in the game, take a turret lead here. It's still tied 4-4. Four to four. But... Koo Tiger is getting way ahead in every other category for the moment, except for Drag. Still behind in that, too. It's been an interesting game. It has. But the Tigers got themselves back together, put on the performance that they should have earlier in this game. I mean, this game could have obviously ended much sooner. Oh, yeah. 
But Spenu, to their credit, I mean, they one thing Spenu does is they keep fighting even when they have these large deficits. They're not afraid to try and bootstrap themselves back into games. Well, you can't be. I mean, it's it's good practice. You need to know how to play behind. You need to know how to try to take every advantage you can. So, yeah, credit to them for not giving up. No, they definitely don't roll over and die, which no. is refreshing to see. Yeah. There have been other teams that we've seen that have completely rolled over, even picking ridiculous comps, and then getting disqualified from the tournament. Good times. Oh, yeah. Oh. Gate of Destiny used just to scare Spenu. Actually, they're going to go deep. Wow, a kill on a Nuclear already just gets evaporated yet again. And it looks like another easy team fight win for the Koo Tigers. Double kill comes in for Kuro. Not a lot that Spenu can do when every one of their carries gets eliminated. Triple kill for Kuro coming in. And there's the ace, about as clean as it gets. And that will be the end of the game. So a little bit of a rough start for, uh, well, a rough right after good start for Koo Tigers and then Coming back, winning it pretty easily in the mid and late games, and that is a 2-0 for the Koo Tigers over Spenu Sonic Boom. GG. And that is why Korean teams don't like playing Jinx. Yep. <laughs> that is the story of how you totally shut down a Jinx player. Even if that Jinx player gets ahead or is fed, there are compositions like this. Want to play that Jinx, you probably should think about banning Hecarim. Yeah. Really good counter, but nice. Nice comeback there from Spenu for just a little bit. Unfortunately, in the end, Ku Tigers pick it up, and they pick up the win with it. Big performance by Kuro after a shaky start. Went down three deaths early on, and then came back 12-3-10 and 10 in the end. Yeah, overall wasn't maybe Kuro's best night, but a win is a win. Well, I mean, he did.